doing running those races off, how efficient they ran. Um, got through 170 uh, quarter midgets um, in, in really good time. So that was good, enjoyable event. Our customers were really fast down there. I didn't get the final count, but I think we won seven or eight um, <clears throat> of the main events. So that was awesome. Um, here at home, uh, won both USAC races. Kevin Thomas winning at Bloomington Friday and Kyle Cummins winning at Hobstock Saturday last night at Paragon rained out. Um, so good start to the season for our customers and we are really excited by that. We've worked really hard in the off season to make sure our packages are as up to date and um, good as they can be. So that's a, an ongoing process with us here. You would think once you kind of hit on something, it'd be good for a while, but honestly in the area of shocks and suspension and the way tires and rules change and horsepower increases and chassis design chases, uh, changes. We're, uh, we're always chasing that. It's an ever moving target. So it's something that we take um, very seriously here. It's a high priority. That's why we're at the races every single weekend. Um, if, if I'm not there, um, Trevor's there, Brad's there, someone is there, um, Braden's racing, um, Ronnie's racing. We're, we're constantly getting data from our customers to try to improve our package. So really cool. Um, in our Monday morning meetings, when we have a lot of victories to announce, everybody gets excited because uh, we work really hard towards that. So last week's episode, um, a question that we missed, which was a good question. We were talking about shock lengths and how to measure, uh, correctly measure a shock. Um, and so one, how to correctly measure a shock, and then also how um, to know what length shock should be on your car and selecting the proper length shock. And somebody asked if we run short shock shafts um, in the front of non-wing cars to help with weight transfer. Um, and that's something that um, has been done from time to time, whether it's a shorter shock shaft or a droop limiter. Um, the big, biggest thing is we want to make sure on a non-wing car that the front end is topping out at the same point so the car drives straight when it does that. Um, so yes, that's something that we pay attention to. I'm sure other shock tuners do as well. It's not a secret um, that we are we're trying to optimize forward drive at all times in a non-wing car. So, um, so that was a question I wanted to answer that we missed last week that was asked after we, we jumped off. Um, so today's topic, we're going to talk about rebound in the shock and how it affects the race car and then we will answer your questions. So I'll try to cover it as best I can for both dirt and asphalt. If you have a question pertaining to this topic or any topic, as always, go ahead and ask it. Type that comment in. Um, I have my phone here and I will um, answer those as best I can. So uh, I guess I should start by a shock absorber um, or a damper as it's called in European racing circles. Its primary function is to control um, both the sprung and unsprung masses of the car um, and it does that by um, the valving that's in the shock. So it, the shock is often referred to as a timing device. So it's controlling um, acceleration, decel deceleration and roll um, and how that car, how quickly it rolls and at what point um, in the corner on the racetrack that it rolls. So that's the primary function of a shock. And so um, what we call compression, or in European IndyCar style racing, they call this bump. That's compression, we're compression, compressing the shock. And extension, that's called rebound. So the rebound rate of the shock. Now, we can control that. Um, this is a display shock, but control that um, in an adjustable shock with uh, a rebound adjuster. Um, so we can screw the adjuster in and what that is doing it <clears throat> is it is uh, minimizing the amount of fluid um, that can bleed off on rebound and we're making the rebound of the shock stiffer. Why would we make the rebound of the shock stiffer or why would we make it softer? Why would we adjust it period? Um, one, for changing track conditions. So asphalt racing, um, it, it, you know, as the temperature of the track changes, the amount of grip we might need uh, would change. Um, on dirt racing, um, as the track conditions change as well. So um, when we lose moisture in the track and the track starts to get slick, um, we might need more rebound in certain areas and less rebound in others. So for example, a non-wing sprint car, the track's getting slick, we're gonna take rebound out of the front shocks to help with weight transfer. So as you take rebound out, it makes the shock extend easier. So it doesn't take as much force 
for the front end to come up, which can help push the back end of the car down and help with forward drive. Now we might add rebound to um, like the right rear corner. So what we're doing there on a non-wing car is as the car goes into the corner and it loads the right rear tire, we're gonna add some rebound there so it doesn't unload the right rear tire as quick. So rebound can help us um, get grip by either increasing it or decreasing it depending on what corner we're talking about. Um, on pavement racing, rebound can add grip, but you'll get to a certain point um, in anything, pavement or dirt, where too much rebound um, will give an adverse effect and you can lose grip on pavement. It can wear tires uh, too quickly. Um, on dirt, uh, the tracks aren't as smooth and it can make the ride a lot rougher. Um, for the example I'll give is like a motocross bike, they run almost zero rebound. And that's so as they go through like a whoop section, the front tire can return um, to the track in between each bump or whoop in the track. So that'll give you a really smooth ride, um, taking some rebound out. However, um, not a lot of grip with that. Um, so we increase rebound to get more grip, um, but we gotta be careful that we don't give it too much rebound because it'll hop, the car will hop. It will be called packing. So the thing compresses, it winds up the torsion bar or compresses the spring, loads the tire, and then when you hit a hole or it needs to transition, you're forcing it over there and you're making it not want to transition and then that can make the car hop. So that's what rebound does and what we control with rebound. Um, it controls how quickly we transfer weight. Um, so compression will control how quickly the car comes down to a certain extent. Um, if you have too soft of a torsion bar or too soft of a spring in the car, um, the compression of the shock isn't designed to make up for that deficiency in your setup. Um, so going stiffer on the shock not, isn't necessarily going to keep a car from bottoming out. Um, that would more than likely need to be a spring or a torsion bar change, but it's going to affect how quickly it goes down and at what point in the corner um, that corner of the race car compresses. So, um, so that's kind of what I want to talk about, rebound. Uh, more than happy to answer any questions you guys have. Um, I know that's kind of glazing over it from a, a high level, um, but we've gotten some questions on that recently, so I wanted to answer that. Um, if you're wanting more in-depth shock stuff, last year during the height of the pandemic, we um, did a full shock seminar. So typically something we would charge folks to come in binder of information and feed them and uh, we do that at our shop typically we do that once a year we didn't do it this year because we're transitioning to moving to our new location um, but I did one last year uh, through zoom and we posted that to our YouTube page so the whole two and a half hour shock seminar um, is posted to our YouTube page so you can go look at that and that'll give you some real in-depth um, information uh, any questions so far? Anybody have any questions? We're happy to answer those for you. Um, again, we try to talk at these topics from a higher level um, since we only typically have 15 minutes or so to go through everything. Um, and, um, you know, we could break this topic down into probably five or six Monday morning quarterbacks if we focus on each little thing. And the other thing that's hard, when we do a shock seminar, one of the first things I do is go around the room and ask everybody, uh, what type of racing they do. So that gives me a good idea of how to answer certain people's questions where in this instance, um, we don't really know exactly who's watching and, and what type of racing you do. Uh, Martin, wing car coming off the corner, starting to rock too much. Starting to rock too much, left rear rebound or not enough right rear rebound? Um, that's a good question. So wing sprint car, he says, coming off the corner, it's starting to rock left to right. Is that not enough right rear rebound or too much left rear rebound? Um, in my experience, it's probably not enough right rear rebound because if you had too much left rear rebound, the left rear would be down and the right rear could be out of the track and kind of sliding from center to exit. So you would be um, down on grip. If, um, if it's kind of just rocking, I would say you, you, you might just need a little bit more right rear rebound. Um, and if you're looking for specific numbers, you can message me and I'm more than happy to help you with that. Uh, Kevin, good question. Um, for a regular rebound adjustable shock, so 
Um, pretend this one is a rebound adjustable, which we make these in rebound or compression. If this was a rebound adjustable shock, most shocks on the market, um, ours included, are what we would call a low speed adjustment. So it's adjusting bleed. So while it adjusts the whole range of the shock, it's predominantly adjusting low speed. So it's gonna adjust more at one inch per second than it does out at 10 inches per second. Now your 10 inch number will change a little bit, but more so your low speed. So I would say your zero to three, four inch per second, depending on the build, is gonna adjust. That's gonna be the, the meat of your adjustment. And that's important. Some got, people will think, and Kevin, thank you for the question. That's a great question. Some people will think um, that you're not gonna feel that as much, but trust me, you will, because that's the turnaround point of the shock. So. Um, it goes through the low speed phase more than anything else. So as it goes from compression to rebound, it has to stop to change directions. It can't just go compression and then straight to rebound. So it compresses and then it slows down to a stop and changes directions and goes to rebound. And when it does that, um, we're crossing through those low speed areas of the shock and that's what you feel. So that's why most shocks are low speed adjustable. Greg Martin, would changing your zero point be a good change rather than trying to add a ton of rebound at low speed? I don't totally understand your question, but I, I'll do my best because the zero um, point is low speed as well. Um, that's the start of everything. So um, changing your zero point um, is really only something we talk, or talk about on the left rear uh, of a dirt car. Um, and when I say dirt car, I'm talking our core markets, micro sprints, mini sprints, midget sprint cars, a little bit different on the modify and late model stuff we do. Um, but on the, the cars I first mentioned, left rear rebound is extremely important. And that zero point is a, is a hot topic and something that we adjust um, frequently. But as you're adjusting that zero point, you're, if you're decreasing it, you're also decreasing your low speed as well, because they, they work together. You can't decrease your zero number and not affect your um, one, two, three inch number. So um, a zero number is important on a, on a uh, left rear. Uh, Frank, asphalt street stock, how does rebound affect each corner? What should be tied down? Um, good question. We don't do a ton of that kind of racing and the rules are very, and it's a, it's a lot different, but in the, the most of the asphalt racing we do, aside from quarter midgets, which is different because they're very underpowered, um, all the shocks are tied down on pavement and they're tied down a fair bit, but if you time down too much, you'll overwear the tires, okay? Um, so if you have too much front rebound, you'll notice a lot of wear in the front tires, excess heat build up, and then it'll be a loss of front grip and a long run. Um, so if you want to call, I'd be more than happy to talk through you, um, you know, talk through some different changes with you on that. Brian, explain the benefit, if any, of running a tie down left front shock on a quarter midget. Um, so there certainly is some benefit. Uh, a track like uh, NCQMA is a place where um, we would do that. Typically, um, that track is extremely high grip. So as you add rebound to the left front of a quarter midget, it slows the weight transfer to the right rear. So anywhere you go where you're having a, a problem of um, sticking the right rear tire too much and slowing the car down, which folks that aren't quarter midget people are like sticking the tire too much, that's a problem in quarter midgets because they're underpowered. So you can get the car where it rolls around the track really nice, but it doesn't make any speed because we're actually bogging the engine down because it's too stuck to the track. So anywhere where you're in that situation, um, a common change is folks to take rebound out of the right rear shock. So to try to let the right rear rebound up and not keep the right rear tire loaded as long. Um, you can also add rebound to the left front to slow down that weight transfer. So that, that's a situation where we would want to do that. Tyler, great question. Um, when does wing speed take over for how much rebound you should... Uh, So Tyler's question is um, in pertaining to wing sprint cars and wing speed or how much downforce the wing is creating, um, when does that take over versus the amount of rebound you need? And that's a great question. So 
it's one of the harder things with tuning a wing sprint car in the modern day is you can get the car to roll around really nice when you're out by yourself and there's no dirty air so to speak and all the air is going over your wings you're getting the maximum amount of downforce available and that's helping the car lay left helping it rotate through the corner and giving it maximum amount of grip down the straightaways because all of the air is going over your wing there's nobody in front of you disturbing that air when you get to a situation where the track slows down and you don't have as much downforce your wing speed has been decreased that's an area where we would start to increase left rear rebound so we can hold the same attitude in the car and carry speed into the center of the corner. As the track slows down, 20 years ago, we all took rebound out of the left rear. Let's take rebound out of the left rear when it slicks off to stick the right rear. Well, we've realized now when we do that, the car just gets rolled up on the right front. You can't carry speed into the center of the corner. So we've lost downforce the car's not wanting to lay left we're trying to cheat it a little bit by adding left rear rebound keeping it laid left and that allows us to have the proper attitude on corner entry and now mechanically we can tighten the car up for the decrease in traction um, in the track that's a great question uh, Ty, explanation of zero point and how that affects the race car. So the zero point or your rebound close zero number, often referred to as the clamp force in the shock, that's how much force it takes to get the shock moving in the <clears throat> other direction. So if your shock has 100 pounds of clamp in it, it's going to take 101 pounds to get it to start pulling out. Um, so that's basically the short version of that. Awesome, glad you guys uh, had some great questions today. Um, if I miss your question, go ahead and comment. More than happy to uh, answer that after the fact. And if it's a question I feel will benefit everybody, we'll talk about it next week. Um, thank you for tuning in. Hope you guys have a fantastic week and we look forward to being back next week for episode 134.